All right, in this video, we are going to add another player. First things first, I want you to go ahead and point out something that may have happened to you. And if it does, it's fine. You may notice that I no longer see my black boundaries around the game interface. That's actually okay. They're actually still there. I can tell they are there because if I click here, I can choose edit. If there were nothing there, my choices would of course just be create and cancel. I can see that the boundary is still there. Do not worry if you no longer see your boundaries on the outside. Moving forward with adding another player. To do that, we are going to come here and first things first, we need to move our ball over. Make sure, of course, that you are on the game world layer. Then I'll come here and we are going to add the paddle for our other player, which is in this case, the computer. I am going to choose create. I'm going to call this one computer paddle. And for the name, we'll just do computer one. I do want this to be movable, but it does not need to be affected by gravity. But again, if you have zero gravity in your settings, it doesn't matter if this is checked. And then we want to make sure we leave these settings at the default values. Next, I'm going to set this up to be a rectangle. Now, if we need to click edit, if you remember from a previous video, we need our paddle to be one block across and three blocks down. The way I can do that is by clicking on this scale icon here. Down at the bottom, I'm going to change the height from one to three. Now I'm gonna come over here and slide this grid over to make it as big as it can be and change my color to white. I'm going to come in here and manually change the hexadecimal color code to be six Fs, which is the hexadecimal color code for white. So now the color will be a pure white as opposed to an off white. I'm going to start clicking in the squares to create a solid white one by three paddle. Please go ahead and do the same to create your paddle. Now that I'm done, I'm going to click OK. I see I have my paddle here, but it's not going to do anything until we add some behaviors. So we need to go back into the paddle settings and click behaviors. The first thing we want to do is start with a trigger. We want to use the always trigger and we need to lock the paddle on the X axis. If you remember, we did the same thing for the player paddle on the opposite side. So now we have the always node and we're going to connect it to a number node which is under logic and math. We're going to connect out to in, and we'll set this to be, let's just try 32. Now we need to add a position node, which is under properties. Again, this locks the paddle on the X axis. Next, we're going to set a timer. What we're going to tell the computer paddle where to go so that it reaches the ball and the ball can bounce off the paddle. If we didn't do this, the ball would just go by the paddle and we wouldn't have much of a game, right? We'd always win. We're going to start by adding the timer from the triggers menu. We're going to have to figure out where the ball is and where the paddle is so that we can make the paddle go and move the ball. To do that, we need to extract the Y position and remember that the Y axis is up and down of the ball and also the Y position of the paddle. Let's go ahead and grab two extractors, which, let's see, is under the properties menu. Click it twice to add two extractors, one for the paddle and one for the ball. Let's go ahead and connect these and set our settings. For the timer, we want to go off every half second. So instead of 10 for the interval, let's do five. Again, we're doing five because the delay is set to tenths of a second. And five tenths of a second is one half of a second. We do want to click repeat forever so that the timer will repeatedly run this logic. Choose okay. Now for the extractors. We need to extract the Y value from an object. We need to select the objects here. So I'm going to choose ball. 
Okay, so I was running into a little issue that hopefully you won't have, but in case you do have it, I just want you to be able to see how to fix it. I kept trying to set my extractor to pull the Y position off the ball, but every time I selected ball and clicked OK, it would just change the setting back to being from current object, which is the paddle instead of the ball. The way you can get around that is if you just click here and choose ball, and then I can barely see, but under this, what's this, it reads select object, so it looks like I need to select the ball again. If you remember, we had the type and object names for each sprite we created. For type, we set our ball to be ball with a capital B. For object, we'd set our ball to read ball with a lowercase b. What we need to do is choose ball again, which selects the object ball. Let me just click this node to make sure my changes are still in place, which they are. So yay, my changes are still there. And I choose OK. Now I'm good. Again, I just wanted to show you that in the event that you had a similar issue. For the Y extractor, we're going to leave from current object selected because again, this is the Y position of the paddle and the paddle is the current object. So we're going to say okay here. Now we're going to connect the out from the timer to the extract of the extractor for each of the extractors. Okay, now we're good. Now we've told the timer to figure out where the ball is and where the paddle is on the y-axis every half second. But now we need to tell the computer to do something with that knowledge. We need to run a math expression. You may be thinking, wow, I didn't know there was so much math in games, but there actually is. I'm going to come up here and under logic and math, I'm going to choose expression and drag it out here. What we're going to do is set the y position of the ball which is here to be A, and we're going to set the Y position of the paddle, which is down here, to be B. Then we're going to evaluate the difference between the Y position of the ball and the Y position of the paddle because we want the paddle to come closer to the ball. What we need to do is connect the extractor to the Y position for the paddle to the eval node, which eval is short for evaluate on the expression node. Now click on the expression node and we're going to set the expression to be A minus B. This is the Y position of A, which is the ball, minus the Y position of B, which is the paddle. Now that we've done that, we need to tell the paddle whether to go up or down based on what the expression tells us. To do that, we are going to insert a filter node. Come over here so you can connect those two. We're going to leave the filter to say greater than zero. So if the difference between A and B is greater than zero, we're going to have the paddle move up. I'm going to grab two number nodes here and place one here and one here. And if the paddle moves up, we're going to have it move up at a speed of six, which is the number we used for the player paddle. And if the number is not greater than zero, we're going to have the paddle move down at a speed of negative six. Pass is going to connect to N here. And if it fails, meaning it is not greater than zero, we will connect here. Just to be clear, the positive number makes the paddle go up and the negative number makes it go down. The sixes are just arbitrary number we set to the velocity or speed. But we need to tell the logic that those numbers are meant for the velocity. Just like we did for the player paddle, that means it is that we have to come over here and grab the velocity node from the properties and just connect it to these numbers. And we're just doing the y velocity, we're not doing anything for the x, so let's just leave that there. And if you want to drag it over just a bit to clean up your logic and see it better, you can certainly do that. All right, so I know that was a lot. So I'm just going to quickly review what it is we said was going on here. What we created with our logic is that we want the computer paddle to always be in the X position. That's all it says up here, that the computer paddle is always set to this X position. The logic down here sets the Y position of the paddle. We used a timer that will evaluate this logic every half second. 
the logic is going to extract the y position of the ball and the y position of the paddle. Next, it's going to compare those two different y values to each other. Next, our logic says that, hey, if the difference is greater than zero, we're going to move the paddle up. If the difference is not greater than zero, we're going to move the paddle down. And the sixes here just set the velocity at which the paddle is going to move on the y-axis. So that is your logic for the computer paddle. Let's go ahead and test it down here at the bottom by clicking play. And I see that the computer paddle is moving based on where the ball is in the background. Again, let's just choose edit, then behaviors. It will probably stop the preview because the logic test was done. What we can also do is just go ahead and play the game. Now I'm controlling the paddle on the right. Oops, the computer paddle didn't move. Why was that? I think the computer paddle needs to move a little faster. Let's go back to our editor and see what's going on. Let's just see what happens if we double this like in the previous example. Let's change these numbers to 12, and these numbers to negative 12. Let's also check our timer. Aha! There's a problem. Our original edits are gone. I'm not sure why that was, but we're going to change this back. This explains why the paddle was moving so slowly. Let's make it a little faster. Let's do three-tenths of a second, and we'll repeat forever. So we lost our timer logic there, which was the problem. So make sure that you've got our delay set so that the timer is triggered every half a second or less and that it repeats forever. Now we can test our game. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK down here at the bottom and choose OK again. And I'm going to play the game. All right, now the paddle is moving a lot faster. It actually may be moving a little bit too fast. Again, I can change that by changing the velocity back to 6 instead of 12. Let's just come in here and change it again. Now I'm going to play the game again. All right, so now that paddle is moving at a better speed. All that computer paddle is doing is trying to track where the ball is so that it can move accordingly to meet the ball. So that is how you add another player. In this case, our other player was the computer. In the next video, we're going to look at how to keep score. We want to be able to keep score between the player and the computer. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.